Hello friends, Devin here and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new how-to video. In this video here, I want to talk to you about varnishing your paintings and more specifically, three different ways in which I finish my paintings. If you are new here, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, we do videos like this on the regular as well as painting videos, so please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date with all the latest videos that we put out. So if you're here watching this video, I assume that you know why you need to varnish your paintings, but in case you don't, the very simple answer is to protect it. Varnish provides a protective surface that does not allow the UV to fade your paint or dull your paint over time. It also makes it very easy to clean, to dust, to get your household grime off that painting and allow it to look as good as new for many, many, many years to come. So the first technique I want to show you and demonstrate in this video is going to be what's considered a brush on of varnish, but we're not going to be brushing it onto this painting and I'll explain why we won't be brushing it. Uh, the product we're going to be using is going to be this Liquitex varnish. I've used a lot of varnishes over the years. The finish and the quality of this varnish I find far superior to anything else I've tried. I will try to leave a link down in the description below for this specific product. Um, it is a brush on, so they do want you to use a nice soft bristle brush. But in this painting, uh, in particular, I think we are going to go with the sponge on technique. Uh, this is something that I haven't really seen done by many, but has worked out well for me, especially on these larger format paintings like this 40 inch by 40 inch uh, painting, where using a smaller medium sized brush will actually take a good amount of time, as well as there's a lot of texture on this. So, you know, the consistency that a brush brings you may not be as important as you know, just getting it on um, and keeping your wet edges. Because when you're working with varnish, you always want to be working on a wet edge. You don't want to be overlapping on a semi-dry or a sticky edge. You always want it to be wet so the varnish will flow together and eliminate the brush strokes or the overlap or any of the inconsistencies you may have if you're working on a semi-dry edge. So because of the size of the painting, uh, it makes sense to use a sponge. So let me demonstrate on how we do that. So to get started here, what we will require is obviously your varnish. The one I will be using in today's painting will be a gloss varnish. I was thinking about a matte, but I think a gloss will complement this quite nicely. Some sort of dish. This is, I think, a leftover Chinese food uh, delivery vessel. Obviously your sponge, I did get these ones at Home Depot, I cut them in half, um, and what you can do after you're done is I just seal them right in the dish after we're done, still wet, they will stay wet, and you can use them over and over and over again, and you're not wasting the expensive varnish. So let's get started here. So I have my varnish in the dish, I have my painting cleaned and dried, dust free. I have dusted off my sponge to make sure there's no rearward sponge pieces or anything that may get in, impregnated into the finish. And then it's as simple as dipping the entire sponge into the finish, coming over to your painting and giving it a wipe all the way across. And then I like to go back just to make sure everything's covered. And Rinse and repeat over and over until your painting is covered. And because you're moving such a large amount of product in one swipe, you don't need to worry about your wet edges. You're always going to find a wet edge. So with this product, like any other varnishes on the market, it is required to put two coats for optimum protection. So what I will do is, as you can see, I'm going horizontal here. And for the second coat, after this dries in two to three hours, I will actually come back in the opposite direction. So if there is any sponge marks or leftover marks, they should hopefully be filled in by coming over in the opposite direction.
And it's as simple as that. This piece is now varnished. Like I said, two to three hours later, I will rotate it and come back in a perpendicular uh, motion just to make sure that I get rid of um, any of the little brush marks, I guess you can call them, across the painting, and you're done. So the next technique is very similar to the first, and that is going to be to actually brush on your varnish. Now, I usually like to do this on smaller canvases where the sponge could be a little more cumbersome or it doesn't make sense to set up the sponge and absorb that much varnish just for such a small painting. So this one I think is 24 by 18, so it's perfect for a brush. So I choose a rather large brush. This is a very, very soft bristle brush, a fine bristle brush. The finer you can get, the better. It means that you won't have the brush marks in your varnish. And it's as simple as loading the brush up, starting again on one side and making sure you're always working on a wet edge, minimizing your overlap, minimizing uh, putting new varnish onto tacky varnish. And you just start and go all the way across your painting, reload. And I like to come in the opposite direction so that your main load of varnish will start on the opposite side of the painting, if that makes sense. And then just continue. And just like the sponged painting, as this dries, I will come along and then brush in this direction to minimize any of the brush marks that may appear onto the painting. And that's it. And the last and final technique I want to discuss in this video is a technique that we actually have to move outside or at a minimum into my garage to complete. And that is a spray-on varnish. I'm not a huge, huge fan of spray-on varnishes, but they do have their place. If done correctly, they can give you a very, very nice finish. Not a resin level finish, but pretty close. You do need a high ventilated area. And what's important is in the varnish that you pick, you're going to want to get a non-yellowing, UV-resistant varnish. There's many different brands out there. You go to Home Depot, any art supply store, they will have them. But make sure it states non-yellowing, UV-resistant varnish because not all of them will resist UV and will yellow and look horrible over time. This is a Rust-Oleum product. Home Depot carries it. It works great. Let's go outside and let's see how we do it. So here we are in my garage. I apologize about the acoustics. It is a large, open, echoey space, but we do need good ventilation when we use any sort of aerosol product. I will be opening the garage door before I spray. It's closed right now to keep the heat in here. Um, so a couple basics when it comes to aerosol uh, cans, obviously giving it a good shake, making sure that that metal ball in there, plastic ball, loosens up all the paint and mixes it with the solvent. Second thing you need to do is when you're actually spraying aerosol, you wanna make sure your canvas is as vertical as possible. Unlike the brush on or the sponge on uh, finishes where you want it horizontal, this you don't want any pooling. This goes on very, very light and dries almost immediately on contact. So you want your surface to be as horizontal as possible as to not get any of the droplets that may come out of the nozzle dripping down on your canvas, leaving an ugly finish. So an easel or just standing it up on a wall or a block of wood works perfectly for this. Next thing you need to know is how to actually use this product. It's not as simple as just spraying it on and being done. How you want to use an aerosol is you actually want to start spraying off of the canvas or off of the product that you're spraying. So your spray starts here because when you first spray a spray paint, an aerosol, the droplets are large and get ejected out. Anything that gets caught up around the nozzle, as soon as you press the nozzle, will get thrown out. So you want that to be thrown out off your canvas and you want a consistent spray before you actually hit your work. Same thing on the finish. As the spray comes down, the droplet size gets larger. So as you finish off the end here, you want to continue off and spray into open space before you release the 
pressure off of the nozzle, allowing those droplets to fall off and not land onto your canvas. And outside of that, you want to have maybe about a 50% coverage, overlapping coverage on each of your strokes. And you're going to want to give it a very, very quick dry. It dries almost instantly and do a second coat uh, to finish. So at least two coats, sometimes even three, depending on the layers you want to build up. Lighter coats are better. So if you do more lighter coats, less chance of dripping, less chance of any ir irregularities in your finish. So if you can do more lighter coats, that's always advantageous. So enough talking, let's see how it's done. And there we are, the varnish is done on here. All in all, it took about five coats to get good coverage. Like I said, less is more, light coats are better. And don't worry, the first few coats are gonna look very, very blotchy, very, very streaky. It will fill in as you go, and as it dries, the consistency will balance out and give you a relatively beautiful finish, although still textured, because the texture of the canvas will come through because this varnish is very, very light. But that is your spray-on varnish. And just like that, we are back inside. I hope you found this video informative. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please take a moment to hit that like button down below. Also, I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know in the comments on how you finish, how you varnish your paintings. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And we'll see you on the next one.